Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear my voice? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you to all the participants and also Alena as the speaker who has been willing to take her time for this webinar. My name is Aulia from Apiari Coworking Space as the co-host for this webinar. Before we start the webinar, I will explain a little about Apiari Coworking Space. And so Apiari uh, Coworking Space provides workspace, virtual office, and community. We also regularly provide online events to provide insight and knowledge to everyone to help the to help uh, all of all of you to develop business and uh, self development. For more information, all of you can keep updated on our Instagram page at apiari.coworking. Okay, so in this webinar, we will discuss about beginner guides to Facebook and Google. Uh, ads with Alena as a senior traffic manager of Go Mobile Indonesia. Of Go Mobile. So this webinar is a two-way uh, interaction. If you have a question, you can write them in a chat box below, or uh, directly ask Alena when it comes to uh, Q and A session. Without a, without a further ado, place and time I give to Alena. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Alona. I'm Senior User Acquisition Manager at Comobile. And first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, having me here. It's a big pleasure. Uh, are you seeing the slides? Is everything okay? Okay, sure. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, I'm Senior User Acquisition Manager at Comobile. GoMobile is a digital advertising agency. We are specializing in mobile marketing. Since the early beginning, media buying was our main expertise. Uh, as for now, we can effectively run advertising campaigns in all the possible sources, uh, starting from GoNet, which is our own DSP programmatic platform, Facebook, Google, to less popular placements like TikTok, Snapchat, and many others. But of course, we offer not only media buying solutions, we are a full cycle uh, agency, which may cover all needs of our clients within their digital ecosystem. It brought us to three offices worldwide, Russia, Indonesia, and the USA, a, top of, a ton of happy clients and several independent business units. Before we start, I'd like to ask you to send your questions in the chat during our session. Uh, and after my presentation, we will jump onto the Q&A block. Okay, let's start. Let me start uh, uh, from our topics for today. First part will be a very quick intro uh, into the basics of marketing. I will explain why at all we should use Google and Facebook and why, uh, uh, how to use them correctly. After those, we will dive deeply to the Google's ecosystem where I will summarize the main points about it and will share some insights. And then we'll do all the same with Facebook. At the end, we'll have a closer look on easy checklists that will, uh, that will show you what to double check before your campaigns will be launched. Okay, let's start with the main question. Why at all we should use Google and Facebook as our sources, beginning from Facebook? Facebook is the biggest social network in the world. It got a plenty information about its users, their interests, their behavior, and because of that, it could be considered as one of the most effective ad placements. Talking about Indonesia, at least half of the country can be reached uh, through that platform, which is incredible. And Google, on the other hand, is uh, dominating the uh, field of search. Uh, so we all search for something every day. Uh, and uh, basically, this traffic can be monetized, and it's already is monetized by Google. Uh, and we can use it to grow our businesses. The main question for us as marketers here is why? Why should we choose these channels instead of the others? The answer is quite simple here. Facebook and Google have built their ecosystems around their products, uh, which allows them to collect the data and uh, uh, give it to us to use it at targeting levels. So uh, all, all of this, as I told in the beginning, allows them to understand a lot about their customers. And this information combined with the masses of people using their products makes the most effective ad placements. 
uh, before we start to discuss the placements in the detail, I think it's important to refresh the knowledge about the basics of marketing at all. Uh, we all know that the preparation is very important. Of course, you can simply launch the campaign on Instagram and wait for something to happen. But uh, with this approach, you may waste a lot of your money for nothing. And also, you won't be able to get helpful insights to improve your future campaign's performance. That's why we always suggest to start your work from strategy. It will structure your approach and will let you to analyze the information that you get from your campaigns. Here on the left side of the slide, you can see the checklist with easy steps that you should take before planning any advertising activities. First of all, conduct a market research. Find out how big is your potential audience, what kind of marketing instruments can be used, and who are your competitors. Secondly, take a closer look at your audience. Build personas of your potential customers. You must have a proper vision on them to make your ad spends effective. The best way to do it is to analyze your existing sales uh, and have an interview with your own customers. If you don't have any, don't worry, or just interview your friends or relatives, it also can work. But be sure to ask the right questions. There is a book called The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. It gives a lot of helpful insights on how to proper questioning. Now we come to our competitors. Be sure to find them and analyze their activities. For you, it might be an easy way to gather market insights without any spending. Check out the prices, similarities in your products, their USPs, and with all of the information, find out how can you position yourself in the market. Uh, which of channels should you use and what communication strategy could you pick? Now let's move to the product. Check out your own USPs, its unique selling propositions of your product, and try to think if you can add or change something uh, with all the information that you gathered above. Two last steps might be the most complicated. You must set up the KPIs and plan your further activities. Start from determining the main goals of your business. Based on it, choosing the relevant instruments, also known as advertising channels, and your communication strategy. You should also clarify how are you going to measure the results and track the progress of your future campaigns. With all that info, allocate the ad budget and launch your campaign. Here on the right side of the slide, you can see the simple model. It's called AIDA. It represents the usual steps that your customer take uh, from the first contact with your brand to the particular action like purchase uh, uh, of your product. Always keep uh, this funnel in mind because you will have to take your users through all of the steps all, all the time. Based on the complexity of your business, uh, that could uh, uh, that could take moments, days, or for some cases, it could be years. So let's move forward, forward and figure out what would uh, your campaign goals be like. Uh, in most of the cases, they are divided on two big parts, awareness goals and performance-oriented goals. Uh, the main purpose of awareness is to let people know about your product, strengthen the knowledge, and keep reminding about yourself. On the other hand, performance is aiming for more obvious results. It's all about valuable actions that uh, users take through your business. By the way, it's not only about direct sales. It could also be calls, lead generations, retention, and many other metrics. Uh, your main goal will determine the type of the campaign you should choose within your ad cabinet, your buying model, and which KPIs you will track. Now, when we briefly covered, uh, the basics of marketing, let's jump to Google. Uh, so first of all, let me show you how the Google ecosystem is structured. It's divided to two big parts, first of which is GDN or Google Display Network. It is the collection of placements, apps and websites where you can show your ads. Unlike the search, uh, they will be shown outside of Google ecosystem, but you will still be able to use all targeting and Google tools that are available. Display Network also has YouTube in it, for example, and uh, with the plenty of possibilities for content-oriented targeting, so don't miss that as well. Uh, display placements usually cover the upper strategies of the AIDA final, so awareness, interest, and desire. On the other hand, we have Search. Uh, it's the ad placement that works in the Google search engine, 
it will be helpful to run performance-oriented campaigns because uh, you can uh, you can communicate with the users who already already have the intent to use your product or service. Uh, all of these placements may be launched through one cabinet, Google Ads, uh, Google AdWords in the past. So don't get get frustrated about it. Uh, Google has got strong and weak points, so let's keep them in mind. Uh, first of uh, pros is broad audience. As I told before, almost all people in the world are using it uh, as their searching platform, but there is more. Wide variety of placements. You can find Google Display Network banners all across the internet. Uh, for example, you can find them on all of the Indonesian popular news portals like Compass, Betty, Kliputan, and many others. Next, it has got all the popular formats that exist on the market, from standard ones to interactive and more. Uh, effective targeting, as I told before, Google collects and analyzes quite a lot of information about its users, so the variety of targeting is quite huge. Uh, and of course, it's perfectly integrated with Google Analytics, which is an analytical tool, uh, which will allow you to get deeper understanding on, uh, of your results and the consumer's behavior. But of course, there are some cons. And for Google, uh, first of which is wide variety of placements, uh, which could be a negative factor if you're only starting, uh, because your ads without a proper placement optimization will be shown everywhere. So you will have to spend time to create specialized whitelists to make Google work. Uh, and second is that Google Ads Cabinet has got plenty of settings, and it might be complicated at the beginning, but uh, I am sure you, uh, I can assure you that uh, you will master it. It won't be a problem uh, in a month or so. So uh, if your main product is an app, Google grants very limited options to optimize your campaigns. Uh, Google app campaigns called UAC. So uh, the optimization might be difficult there. Okay, uh, here uh, are some display formats examples that are available at Google right now. Those are basic static and video formats which are available in most sources. Not so much to say here, so let's jump to the search. Here is how the search ads look like. It's the format uh, that is being shown on the several first spots in the search results. I'm sure that you have all seen it before. Uh, one of the important things about search, uh, during the preparation of your campaign, you will have to collect and structure keywords for it. Here are some of the tools that might be helpful for it, like Ubersuggest, Google Keyword Planner 2, WordStream. Basically, there are much more of them, but these ones are the most popular. Now let's briefly run through targetings that are available through Google Ads. Google allows us to utilize quite a lot of targetings, and here you can see all of them. First of all is location. It's basically geotargeting, which allows you to reach people in particular countries, areas, villages, districts. Uh, second of all, it's language. Language of the user's device, phone or laptop. Uh, content exclusion. You can exclude controversial content like alcohol, porn, violence and many others to protect your brand. Uh, next is device targeting. Uh, you can target specific models or operating system versions of the device. Uh, next is demographics, uh, which is age range, gender, and other um, targetings. Next is placements. You can choose relevant websites and apps, whitelist them, or blacklist ones that don't serve you. Next is interests. Google suggestions on what users likes and interests in. Uh, content category targeting. Basically, it's a content targeting related to the content of some particular websites and apps, for example, news sites or game apps, cooking and other. Uh, previous interaction targeting. Uh, uh, here you can set up retargeting to the people that already communicated with your business, visited your website, have seen your ad, or for example, bought something from you. Uh, next is custom audience. It's pre-made custom audience from Google, third parties, or from your own database, which you can upload to Google and use to target uh, those users. And keywords. Uh, and these are not the keywords from the search ads, but the ones that are related to the customers that you would like to reach. 
So now let's say a couple of words about the optimization. Optimization is a process of result improvement after the launch of the campaign. It's always mandatory because it's a very rare case when you launch the campaign and everything goes smoothly right away. Uh, in addition to that, you will always want to lower the spends, increase your conversion rates and many more. Uh, on Google, you usually will optimize your campaigns based on the following indicators. First of which is keywords. Uh, in the search, you will have to find and determine uh, ineffective keywords that, sp that spend your money and doesn't provide you uh, the results that you are aiming for. So you need to deactivate, deactivate them and allocate your budget to ones that bring you desired conversions. Uh, second uh, path of optimization is ad content. Uh, your uh, images and texts, uh, you always need to test new creatives, change the details of your creatives, uh, and uh, uh, keep an eye on having uh, call to action buttons and uh, your product's USBs uh, displayed clearly on your creative materials. Uh, third path of optimization is geo optimization. If you don't have some strict rules about geos, for example, on the Jakarta targeting, there's different approaches in different geos. Same banners and targetings may work totally different in different locations, so it's on you to find uh, the communications that works the best. And the fourth is uh, formats uh, and publishers. When you launch a widespread campaign and free to test what you want, turn off the low performance formats at publishers and scale up the ones that provide better results. And lastly, you have audience optimization where you need to try different targetings, which we discussed before, set up several campaigns with different targeting audience and make uh, corrections during the test. So allocate your budget to ones that bring you desired results. Uh, okay. Here are some recommendations on how to work with Google Ads. Uh, these are quite basic, but so many media buyers uh, forget to follow these simple steps. First of all, recheck your creatives. Be sure to have bright images with clear product USBs and call to actions buttons. Uh, don't forget to use keyword planners to collect your, uh, the right uh, keywords to target. They are super helpful. Third, try not to change the bids or budgets for more than 15% in 24 hours for app campaigns, also called UEC. You also should not make changes to the campaign at, in the first week. Uh, it's because it will affect Google's automatic algorithms and it will have to relaunch its optimization, and, uh, which can negatively affect your results and expand the learning period of the campaign. Next, uh, you can set up the events in Google Analytics and optimize towards the conversions. Do not hesitate to do it. Uh, always use relevant targetings. Your target audience must be related to your creative and the product that you promote. Uh, test more theories. More you test, the more insights you get. And lastly, don't forget to optimize the placements while, while running display ads, uh, because it's one of the main instruments for optimization. Okay, at last but not least, Google Analytics. It's an instrument that will allow you to analyze the results of your campaigns. If you still don't have it, be sure to implement it uh, to your website as soon as possible. It's simply done, just add the Google Analytics code to your website and set up the events. The second step is more complicated, but there is a plenty of step-by-step -step guides on how to do it. Why is it so helpful? Uh, first of all, you will not see any results of your campaign without having it on your website. Also, it allows you to get the insights about your real audience. Uh, the organic traffic that comes to you is also being tracked and uh, it will help you to understand uh, how does your audience communicate with your product. Uh, and of course, you will be able to analyze that audience behavior. So you'll see which people, which pages people like and uh, which, they, which do they visit more, which pages they close fast and many other helpful metri metrics can be tracked uh, through Google Analytics. So please implement it as soon as possible. Okay, that's briefly it about Google. Now let's back to Facebook. Facebook, just like Google, has built an ecosystem around itself. It is divided on several main entities, each with its uniqueness. 
right uh, now we've got facebook itself website and app version instagram messenger whatsapp and facebook audience network first three might be quite familiar to us but uh, the audience network is slightly different it's the platform similar to google display network which we discussed before uh, but with a different functionality and WhatsApp is covered great because you, for now, don't have any ad placements on this platform. So let's go next. Uh, so pros and cons. Again, Facebook has got a very broad audience and uh, knows a lot about its users. It means that you can get a lot of traffic and choose the most relevant user to, users to target. Engaging and native formats. Facebook works really hard on its formats and always adds something new. Most of them look very native and get the maximum engagement from the users. Next pro is cross-device advertising. Facebook has got apps and websites and in its arsenal. Plus, it allows uh, it allows to use Facebook login to make it allows users to log through Facebook to other apps and platforms. So in most of the cases, you may be build the ad models, for example, with the start following the users on mobile at the end, reaching them on the laptop. Uh, so uh, basically, it allows you to uh, have multi-touch attribution. And uh, next, uh, last pro is friendly UX. Uh, unlike the Google Ads cabinet, Facebook one is uh, more user-friendly and it's much easier to set up. Uh, but of course, there are some cons. First of which is uh, uh, while you launch your Facebook audience network, you cannot choose the placements, websites and apps that will, uh, uh, where will we be shown your ads. And of course, you will not be able to optimize towards their effectiveness which in some cases may lead to negative results. And in Facebook, creative is the king. So if you don't have a strong team of designers or an agency that will support you in this matter, you may face difficulties in the optimization. Let's check the most common formats. As I told before, there are much more and Facebook is always testing new ones. For example, I have found a new format uh, for the product data feeds just several days ago, which I've never seen before. Uh, all of these formats have their own purposes and uniquenesses. So be sure to choose the ones that will, re that will be relevant to your audiences and products. Let's jump to the targetings. First of all is age and gender as usual, location, uh, which Facebook has got more precise location targetings uh, comparing to Google, as long as they may receive the geolocation data from their apps. Language of the device, demographical data, some of the interests, uh, behavioral targeting, which is interesting because it looks like the interests, but it works slightly different. If you have built your audience ported correctly, you will be able to add some behavioral characteristics like engaged shoppers or football fans, etc. So it uh, basically uses that already uh, did some actions or within Facebook ecosystem so that Facebook ecosystem uh, defines them as uh, uh, people who can repeat this action once again with your business. And custom audiences, uh, these audiences are collected by third parties, by yourself or by Facebook itself, based on the emails, uh, IDs of the device, phone numbers, cookies and other information. Okay, optimization. As I told before, the, uh, the optimization in Facebook works in its, in its own pace. First and the main parameter here is the creative. Be sure to use the most attractive banners. Uh, same with the Google in the geo optimization, based on the location, the user's behavior and creative performance may change. Try out different ad set targetings to find the best performing ones. Also, don't forget to try uh, out and optimize different placements. Your ads may work badly in stories, but deliver outstanding results in feed. Don't forget to use it. And of course, the audience settings. Next, I will show you the regular structure of the campaign. So don't forget to test and change settings if some of your audiences uh, shows weak performance. Okay, 
this is uh, how all campaigns are structured in Facebook. The main level is the campaign. Here you can set up the budget and the name of your campaign. Secondary level is ad set. It allows you to set up all the targetings and define your audiences. And uh, the last one level is uh, ads themselves. Here you can only add creatives and copyrights. As you see, you can test a lot of creatives at, one, uh, at once without need to relaunch the campaign itself. So here are some hints from us. First of all, use Facebook Pixel. It's the code from Facebook that you can implement to your website and optimize your ad campaigns towards real conversions. Second, always match the USPs that you mentioned and the creatives. Third, test more theories, different combinations of targeting, locations, creatives, and copyrights. To simplify the process, you may want to try the dynamic, dynamic ads. Uh, it allows you to make mass tests. Uh, fourth, as usual, uh, write images with your USPs. But try to use as less text as possible. Uh, it will help you to get better results and Facebook will give you additional traffic. Next, uh, do not change your bids significantly within 24 hours. It may affect your campaign performance and relaunch the learning phase. Uh, create more ad sets to get specific results. We recommend to use uh, less than five interests in one ad set. It will allow you to understand which of the interests actually perform well and which of them don't. Uh, next, don't forget to exclude users whom already, uh, who, who you already know. Don't waste your money on it uh, if it's not your purpose. Next, uh, use the data from your database. Usually it gives better results. Uh, run lookalike look -like campaigns. Uh, it's when you basically upload the data to Facebook and allow Facebook to look for similar audience in, in similar audience to which you apply, uh, applied, uploaded. Sorry. Uh, next, don't use same text in the ad and on the banner. You can get better results by uh, mixing and matching. And uh, the last, always add at uh, call to action buttons and not the ones that are pre-made by Facebook, but uh, the ones that you uh, put right on your creative, like buttons uh, and uh, so on. People are more likely to press on them uh, uh, than the regular CTAs from Facebook. Okay, now let's say a couple of words about Facebook Analytics. Facebook Analytics, uh, like Google Analytics, is an inbuilt instrument which may find uh, in your Facebook Business Manager. Uh, just like Google Analytics, it may track events and traffic on your website that came from Facebook. It might be super handy when you regularly use Facebook for advertising. Implementation steps are also quite simple. Just take the code from your cabinet and set up the event. To do so, you may need developers, uh, or you may try to do it yourself with the help of many guides. Uh, main benefits of using Facebook Analytics is uh, better campaign analysis, a lot of audience insights, and uh, events may be used to auto-optimization. Basically, Facebook may automatically help you to sell more. Okay, our last part for today will be about our recommendations. Here is the checklist that may be handy for you uh, to double check your campaigns. Let's briefly run through it. First of all, naming. Naming of your campaign is very important. It might not be that important when you're just learning and just testing, but very soon when you will understand the advertising platform and have hundreds of launched campaigns, uh, you may get very frustrated by, by all of those names and uh, will spend a lot of money by looking for the needed campaign. So it's better to learn to work properly right from the beginning. Build a naming structure uh, that you will understand. Use some points that will help you to understand which, which targetings you are using, what product you promote, and others. Next is creatives. Try to test as much creative materials as possible. You will never know which formats or banners will deliver the best results. And sometimes the results may be very surprising. So if uh, your designer or agency provides you with three versions of creatives, don't pick just one, test all three of them and find out which one works better. Uh, next is targetings. Uh, sometimes the most obvious targeting doesn't work. 
uh, understand how platforms determine the user's targeting and follow its logic. Uh, and lastly, analytics. Always measure your results and analyze them. In most of the cases, no promo campaign is better than a campaign without an analytical tool. Also, don't forget, forget to set up events. Facebook and Google can provide a lot of possibilities for auto-optimization. Uh, use your data. If you have some information, don't hesitate to utilize it. Exclude users that you know, build lookalikes on them, and use retargeting. And of course, optimization. Without optimization, you will not get good results. Be sure to test new and try more. Don't waste your money. Always generate new uh, theories and test them within your uh, campaigns. To summarize, Facebook and Google have got a lot of cool instruments and possibilities that you may reach uh, outstanding results with. So don't miss the chance. You can always ask us on social media if you have any questions. Follow our Instagram and let's get connected from there. Uh, so from now, let's jump right to Q&A section if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Alexa, Alena Maximula, for delivering very insightful and useful material. Uh, before that, sorry for the technical issue. And now it's time for question and answer session. If there's any questions, please drop in the chat box or simply unmute your microphone. Are there any question? Actually, we also got some questions from the Google form from the registration link. So maybe I want to read one of those questions first. So it's a question from a student, actually. Uh, what is the first step for a student who wants to learn Facebook ads for a student? Uh, I would say first uh, step is going to uh, Facebook Q&A section where you can find all the information on uh, available targetings and other options on how to use Facebook ads correctly. And the second one would be launching your campaigns and uh, gain uh, the results and uh, gain your expertise by doing it yourself. It's actually not really uh, complicated. You just need to start. <laughs> okay, you just need to start. That's yes. under the land then. Okay. And okay, if you guys have any question, just chat, just drop your question on the chat box or unmute, raise your hand. And oh, there's another question from the Google form. Okay, it's my voice clear. Yes, yes, I, I can hear you properly. Okay, so is it possible to boost an to boost apps without spending a lot of budget? Uh, <laughs> yes, of course, it is possible to uh, boost your product and promote your product without having a big budget. Uh, it all goes down to optimization. So if you, your budget is really very, very strict, uh, you should uh, test your, you should generate your theories and test them with less spending. For example, $10 on each theory. And then you should analyze your results and pick only the strategies, strategies that worked for you and for your business that gain, gave you desired conversions or other metrics that are important to your business. And then uh, you can relaunch uh, the theories that uh, uh, basically uh, worked for you and maybe generate some others um, depending on the results that you get from your first test. So it's all about in your testing budget small and only scale the uh, theories that already worked for you. Okay, okay. Okay, so... Next question. If you, got, if you guys have any question, just please chat, drop in the chat box or unmute. Okay, from Laura. Hi, Elena. Can you give an example of winning campaign and how we know it's a winning or not? 
uh, I can't show you the winning campaign in, in uh, the ads managers because we don't have test cabinets uh, prepared here, but uh, uh, we need to first answer the question, what is the good campaign that gives you results? And it all come, comes back to the preparation stages where you should ask yourself about what metrics are important for your business. For example, if you are an e-commerce business, uh, you may as well want to drive purchases on your website or an app. Uh, in that case, the main uh, KPI for you would be sales and CPA, uh, CPO, which is cost per order. So how many do you pay to get the order from the customer? And uh, if we choose that this is our main KPI, we should then compare all our campaigns based on this KPI. And the campaign that will have the less CPO will be the winner. But it all depends on which KPIs are you tracking. Well, hi guys. Thank you so much for the answer, Elena. Uh, I'm Laura. <laughs> um, hi. So um, may I ask another question? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Well, so for each campaign, how long we should keep it in uh, Facebook or Google? So let's say minimum minimum days that, okay, we know, okay, this is this going to sell or not? Mm -hmm. There is any parameter? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, so if we are speaking about Google, uh, we might... We need to launch the campaign and then we it's better to uh, wait for seven days at least or 14 if we're they talking about google uec so uh, app campaigns uh, because google has its own automatic algorithms built in their ecosystem and the uh, uh, changes on the first days of the campaign might cause it uh, optimization and lengthens the learning phase uh, but uh, it, let's say 14 days passed and then we we how long can we use this campaign that we launched mm. Bas basically it doesn't have uh, any expired date uh, it only uh, should be turned up off if it uh, doesn't perform best for you so the campaign may uh, the performance of the campaign might uh, fluctuate during its performance and at some point it might be in the next three weeks or in the next three years we don't know but uh, the results may uh, may like become worse uh, so that's the time when you should turn off your campaign and relaunch it and for the Facebook ads, uh, there is no strict rule about uh, don't uh, touching the campaign for first seven days. No, you can do it uh, in 24 hours after launching. And uh, uh, as for Google, there is no expired date. Uh, you should uh, launch your campaign and use it uh, as long as it gives you the results and only turn it off if it doesn't. Mm. All right, get it. Thank you. Okay, so another question. Just you can just unmute like Laura did. Just unmute your mic and ask question directly to our speaker Elena, or just chat. Uh, drop in the chat box. I will read it for you. So, is there any question? While we are waiting for the next question, I would like to add uh, some more to my last answer. Uh, so there is something called the uh, uh, learning phase, as we discussed already, uh, but uh, there are actually some recommendations from the ad platforms on the, how many conversions uh, must your campaign gain uh, in order to uh, optimize correctly and to, to pass the learning cur curve uh, faster. Uh, so for Google UAC campaigns, if we are uh, optimizing towards installs, we should get 100 installs a week or more. 
uh, if we are optimizing towards conversions like purchases or app to cards, uh, it should be 50 events per uh, per week. So uh, for Facebook, it's actually similar. Uh, each ad set uh, within Facebook should get 50 or more conversions that you are optimizing towards. So it might be uh, it might be link clicks, it might be installs, it might be conversions. But you need to make sure you are getting 50 or more in a week uh, in order for campaign to work properly. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, there's a question. Um, is it possible that our ads get rejected after a submission? Uh, yes, there is uh, the possibility of this. Uh, that is because uh, all ad platforms has its own uh, uh, conditions and uh, policies. And uh, basically you need to check uh, uh, is your creative material matches with uh, uh, with ad policies that uh, uh, ad platforms has. Uh, you can always connect uh, to support to make sure what is wrong with your creatives and uh, what should you change to actually go your, get your campaign be live. Okay, thank you. So there's a question from participants to Alena about Google or Facebook advertisement. So actually, it's, there's other question. Okay, so uh, actually, do we have control where our ads appear? Uh, yeah, if we are uh, talking about Google, yes, you always can have uh, uh, the broad uh, the report on where your uh, ads are showing. If we are talking about Facebook, first of all, you can uh, target uh, the placements. So if you only need to show your ads on Instagram, for example, you can uh, do it within Facebook sources. But uh, there is one restriction. If you are using Facebook audience network, which is uh, uh, apps and websites that are not inside of the Facebook ecosystem, like Google Display Network, but uh, you can target them through Facebook, uh, there is uh, the restriction that you can't whitelist or blacklist uh, the sites and apps that you are targeting through that platform. So for, with Facebook, you can't get the full uh, picture of where your ads are shown, but you uh, can exclude audience network and you won't have this problem. Okay, thank you. So we still have time. You can just... I mute your mic and ask question or some questions and or just drop your question in the chat box. Okay, from the form. Um, is it worth worth to spend money on Facebook? The question is, is it worth to spend money on Facebook? Is it worth? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, if I answer, if I, if I would answer shortly, I would answer yes, it is worth uh, to spend your money on Facebook. Uh, around all the clients, uh, all around the world, there are two uh, ad platforms that uh, most likely will perform best for your businesses, no matter which uh, vertical is your business at. It's Google Ads and Facebook Ads how you should pick which one should work the best for you. The best, uh, the best is try them both and uh, uh, discover it through your own experience. But if you don't have, for example, enough budget to test them both, just ask yourself uh, which are your main uh, business goals. If it is uh, uh, more performance oriented, like purchases, at to cards and others, you might try Google first and Google may work uh, better because there you connect with users that already have the intent to use your product. Uh, so they will type like uh, where to uh, get your hair done and you will promote your hair salon, for example, during Google and you will uh, interact with users that are already engaged and already want to have uh, the, the service of the product that you are promoting. Through the Facebook, it's a little bit different because you are working with uh, 
people who are within Instagram and Facebook, and they are actually not really interested in searching for your product right now. That's why the creative is uh, the most important thing within Facebook. You need to catch the attention of the user and uh, make uh, uh, like uh, make him want your product, uh, want to use it right now. And that's the that's the difficulty about Facebook. But Facebook might work uh, perform the best of all sources if your creatives are great. So that's on you to pick. Uh, if you can uh, get your creative materials done, if you have an agency that supports you within the creative strategy, you may as well use Facebook and it might drive best performance for you. Okay, thank you so much. And is there any question? We still have time. And Alena is willing to answer all of your questions. Okay, we still wait our question. Okay. Okay, maybe this is a question. Okay. What kind of images work best for Facebook ads? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, if we are speaking about formats, uh, 1080 to 1350 is the best format that uh, is working uh, through Facebook because it's uh, uh, more lengthier than the square one and it uh, shows, it gets like the full screen of your device uh, and that's why it's more visible for the audience. If we're uh, talking about how you should do your creatives, what is important within your creative making, I would uh, say uh, that the first one is uh, clear uh, and pronounced USPs of your product. Uh, you uh, should only say the things that are important to the customer through your creative. So, for example, if you have the sale uh, within your e-commerce site or something like that, you show your product. Uh, which make uh, people want uh, to buy it already and you also get the discount which triggers it to do it now and uh, one more thing that's important is call to action uh, which uh, might be in the form of, of a button for example install now or shop now that will basically tell the customer the users what to do right now what the action should he uh, do and uh, one more show the final product not your service so for example if you have an app uh, with uh, like pizzas you can order pizza from the app you should not promote your app you should promote the pizza that you are selling through this app because that's what important to the customer and that's what will bring you sales uh, i would say that that's three uh, the most important uh, points of creative making so clear USPs, uh, promoting your final product that you're selling to the customer and call to action buttons. Okay, thank you. So this is question from Camelia Bintang Kecil. Uh, actually, it's not about Google and Facebook, but maybe from your point of view, I want to ask about promoting in TikTok and what do you think is activity and how to know the calculation as we pay via bid bidding? So it's not Google and Facebook, but maybe from your point of view. Can you please repeat the end of the question? I didn't hear it properly. How to know the calculation as we pay via bidding? B I double D I M. This is from the chat, yes. Let me yep. chat box. Yeah. Chat box. Uh, Uh -huh. uh, actually, TikTok ads is uh, my favorite platform to advertise right now <laughs> because uh, it uh, it's, looks a lot like Facebook and it works a lot like Facebook ads, but uh, CPM, uh, which is cost per thousand impressions, is much less. Uh, through TikTok. So you can actually reach the same audience that you are targeting through Facebook, 
but it will have less lower CPA. And uh, uh, through that, you will have uh, the less CPIs, CPAs, and other metrics that are important to your business. Uh, I don't really understand what you're saying uh, when you say you are paying the editing. Uh, I can only imagine you are asking about uh, uh, how you should bid within TikTok. And uh, uh, basically, there are two strategies available. One is uh, lowest cost, where you don't have the bid at all, and you just uh, let uh, the ad cabinet to um, find the lowest costs for conversions for you. And this uh, optimization works nice, but you also have uh, CPM bidding, where you should uh, try different bids to um, uh, learn which one works the best for you. So set the minimum budget and, uh, uh, for example, uh, the cost that uh, TikTok suggests you to use. And uh, look if your budget is spending through the day. If it does, you can lower your bid. If it doesn't, you may as well hire it up. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, there's a question from Gabriela. Alena, is there any app tools besides Facebook and Google that we can utilize, like programmatic? Uh, yes, sure. There are a lot of different sources. And my uh, personal recommendation is uh, if you have the possibilities to uh, use them all and try them all. Why I'm saying that? Because there are uh, truly uh, tested uh, ad platforms like Google Ads and Facebook Ads, which uh, have the great percentage of that it will work for your business. But uh, for example, in TikTok, as I said before, you can, uh, you, you can target those users that you are uh, communicating with through Facebook, but on the much lesser cost. Uh, less cost. So uh, you should try different sources and uh, try which ones are working for you and your product. Programmatic is the great one. The others we can uh, uh, name is uh, Snapchat, TikTok, Likey app. Uh, uh, I am specializing more in Russian markets, so we have different uh, platforms that are not available in Indonesia, so I'll stop here. Okay, thank you. So there are a lot of app tools, right? Okay, uh, next question. Just to wait, but I could hear. Okay, what are the different types of Facebook ads format? What are different types of Facebook ads? Okay, uh, so first of all, we have seen uh, images. Uh, just uh, G JPEG, uh, like uh, static images. And there are different uh, sizes that you can use, like square one and uh, more horizontal one and <laughs> vertical one. So there are, there are different ones. Uh, next thing, you have uh, video ads where you can show videos. Uh, third of which is carousel. It's uh, uh, basically when you use uh, three or more images or videos in a row, and uh, in stories, uh, user will have different slides of it, and then uh, within the feed, uh, he can swipe it. So uh, it's great, for example, to show your different products if you are re retail or something. For example, different types of shorts you have for, within your store. Next, uh, we have uh, collection ads and instant experiences, which uh, uh, looks like a landing page, but within the Facebook ecosystem. So if you doesn't have uh, the website or if uh, you can't implement Facebook pixel, for example, uh, or if your website is launching uh, to, uh, it's basically doesn't launch, launch fast, uh, you can use instant experience to fix that and uh, communicate with your audience fully through the instant experience. And also you have uh, interactive formats like uh, lead ads, uh, where you uh, encourage people to give, uh, to ask, answer your questions and give the information on them through the Facebook and gather this information. And you have uh, uh, playable ads where you can, for example, if you have uh, a game, uh, you can make an ad uh, which will help users to understand the interface of the game and how to play it. 
Okay, thank you so much, Elena. Is there any question? If there's any question, just unmute. We can just directly ask to our speaker. Okay, maybe we have like five until 10 minutes for the question and answer. So we still have time for questions. Hi, Elena. <laughs> again, it's me. Well, can you repeat it again or type it on chat about the tools that you use in Russia? Because um, now I'm targeting a Poland market. Mm -hmm. So may maybe I can try to use that tools as well. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, we have uh, Yandex. Uh, it's uh, basically Russian Google. <laughs> oh. uh, and yeah, uh, it's like a search engine, but uh, uh, it started in Russia and it mostly covers Russian market, but uh, SNG countries as well. So Poland might have some traffic uh, in Yandex, within Yandex sources. And uh, the second one, which is uh, quite large uh, in Russia, and it may as well be in Poland, is my target. It is a social network which uh, uh, combines uh, different several social networks actually uh, that are uh, working in Russia and in uh, the current uh, Russian speaking countries basically uh, targeting different age and gender profiles. So like Adnaklasniki and VK, you can target them all within my target ads. Uh, I, I can write them in the chat so it's, it might be easier for you. Yes, that's cool. Okay, my turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try to find about this more since um, okay. I'm Indonesian, but currently I'm in Poland because I continue my study. And my product is, um, what is, um, fabric watch. So I bring any uh, fabric from Indonesia and make it into a watch it's an exotic watch so um, yes and this is very new for me to do uh, my own marketing so mm -hmm. yeah that's why i want to try it thank you mm -hmm. sure good luck with your uh, campaigns yeah good luck hello <laughs> and okay if there are any questions you can just unmute your mic like Laura, for any follow-up questions from the previous questions. Okay, Mr. Reed. Okay, um, how do we know what type of uh, the audience, what type of audience to choose for my product? So, uh, I will speak from my own experience here, and uh, uh, that basically all, all of my tests are leading to the answer that, firstly, you should try uh, the broadest audience you can target. So, for example, if your business is located in Jakarta and uh, you can only ship within Jakarta, uh, you might as well target all the users available in Jakarta. Uh, second, uh, so first step is launching broad campaign. Second step is analyzing the results of the campaign. So you should analyze the breakdown by age, by gender, by interests. Uh, you should uh, 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 you should see which creatives perform better. And based uh, based on these statistics and your actual results of your campaign, you can then. Uh, define your audience and make it uh, make it more defined. Pick the interests that worked best. Pick uh, ages and genders that worked best, and uh, lead from there. So first of all, broad campaign. Then analyzing and uh, uh, generating theories, and then testing those theories. Okay. Thank you so much, Elena, for answering all the all of the questions. 
to have like five more minutes for the questions and answer session. So oh, I, I will add uh, one one more thing to my last time. Uh, if if you already have uh, your customer base database, uh, you can upload it to Facebook and Google, and uh, uh, create lookalike audiences. So allow uh, it will allow Google Ads and Facebook Ads to find uh, and search for the users that are. Uh, similar to the ones that already purchased from you. That also might be the great audience to start your testing with. Okay, thank you so much, Elena. Maybe we still have time for one more or two more questions. Please, if you guys have any question, just drop in the chat box two questions or one question with the follow-up question. That's okay. There are any more questions for Elena about Google and Facebook ads? Or more than that, like TikTok and other app tools? Okay. Okay, so I found the questions and it's interest, interesting. Is there a way to know the industry-wide average cost per click? <laughs> okay, that, that is the pain, painful one for me as a media buyer. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, there are uh, some tools that can give you estimated CPC that is... Uh, uh, that may work for your business. For example, you can use Google Keyword Planner tool uh, where you can uh, type your uh, relevant keywords. For example, if you promote hair salon, so uh, hair salon nearby and other keywords, you collect them. Uh, that, call, that is called your semantics. And Google will estimate, estimate your CPC based on the volume that you are uh, willing to reach. Uh, so, uh, Basically, uh, Facebook has a uh, uh, similar tool. You can use uh, uh, the Rich and Frequency Planner uh, to uh, get your CPM. It's not CPC, but you can estimate your CTR and uh, go from there and find out which your CPC might be. But uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, the results that you are gaining from the uh, uh, your estimated result might not uh, like be the same as your actual result in your campaign. That's because your CPC is the result of your creative. Uh, so the better your creative is, the higher is your CTR, uh, the lower is your CPC. And uh, this is uh, the impact that uh, all the estimation tools, they can't predict. So. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you so much, Elena. Uh, but before we end this event, can you just sum up uh, from the materials or for uh, from the question and answer session? Uh, while the participants filling the the poll. Yeah, sure. So uh, we briefly covered today uh, the marketing basics. Uh, we spoke about the optimization, the targeting is available and some pros and cons of Google Ads and Facebook Ads. Uh, we uh, spoke about why you should use Google Ads and Facebook Ads and how to do it correctly. So uh, to sum up, our main uh, suggestions, the first one is to implement analytical tools because without them, uh, you basically can track the performance of your campaigns. The second one, always generate new theories and test them. That's called optimization. That will lead you to best results. And uh, the last, last thing, if you don't have time to manage your campaigns itself, you can always uh, connect with us and we will try to help you in all the ways possible. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. That was a pleasure for me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. We still wait 
maybe three or five more people to fill out the poll. Thank you so much. And don't leave because we still have a photo session with our speaker. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, please to wait the poll, maybe two more people. Okay, yep, the polling is still going on. Okay, still wait. Okay, do, uh, before that, okay, before we end the poll, I wanna say thank you so much to Alena uh, as our speaker tonight uh, for delivering very insightful and useful course for all of us. And uh, because it seems there are no more questions and we're also at the end of tonight's event. I, Pierre and I will thank all participants for joining this event and I hope this event will give you a lot of new insights, knowledge and inspirations. And we want to remind you to stay up to date to our events by following our Instagram at apiari.coworking. And if you guys need office spaces, virtual office and other services to help your business, let us know if we can help. So yeah. Okay, and tomorrow we also have other event entitled how to boost employees productivity during work from home. So if you're interested, just don't forget to register, okay? Okay, so everyone is love the form. Okay, so now maybe you can stop share your screen. And then we can take a picture together. Okay. Uh, maybe the participants can open the camera so we can screenshot all the participants, the speaker, and the camera. Maybe for Sophie, Ira, Ka Arkanto, Ka Arik, Ka Francisca, you can open your camera. And I will screenshot. Okay. Okay. I was screenshot and one, two, three. Yeah, one more time. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much and see you on the next event. Thank you so much for Alena from Go Mobile. And uh, stay safe and see you another time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.